On the 24th of October 1946, inside of Prague Prison's courtyard, one of the most brutal war criminals of the Second World War was led to his execution post by prison guards. He was a man who was responsible for the brutality of many evil guards and shocking actions that led to the executions of thousands. Kurt Daluga was the chief of the Ordnungspolizei, or the Order Police, inside of Hitler's Third Reich, and he also served as a protector of Bohemia and Moravia, a man who was responsible for keeping the Czech people under submission, and he arranged a number of public executions to terrorise the population. But he would be condemned for being a horrific sadist and a man who brought horror to thousands of people in the lands that he oversaw. Join us today as we look at the execution of Kurt de Luga, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Kurt de Luga was born on the 15th of September 1897, and little is known about his early life. But when he was a young man, he joined the Prussian army, and saw action in the First World War. He served on the Eastern Front, and rose throughout the ranks quickly, and became an officer, but then he was moved over to the Western Front. However, de Luga did sustain a bad injury to the shoulder and head, and it was claimed in hospital that he was 25% disabled, and at the end of the conflict he was decorated for his bravery, and then he found work as an engineer. But after his experiences in the war, Kurt de Luga then sought to join a number of political groups, as he was not happy with the post-war Germany. He joined the Upper Silesian Self-Defence and was their leader, this being a group of World War I veterans who came into conflict with Polish people but he was also a member of the Fry Corps, who were angry with the Weimar Republic government. It was around this time that Adolf Hitler then began to conduct a number of speeches for the Nazi party, and he rose to gain more popularity. But in 1923, Deluga joined the Nazi party officially, and he would not be put off following the failed efforts of Hitler during the Munich Putsch. He then joined the Berlin Frontbahn, which was a detachment of SA members, who had been outlawed following the failed revolution. However, de Luga then rose to become the leader of the SA detachments in Berlin, after in 1926 the banning was over. He began to rub shoulders with the Nazi hierarchy, and was a deputy for Josef Goebbels, the Gauleiter of Berlin, and was seen as a reliable official, and Hitler also valued him. He was advised to join the SS and leave the SA behind him, which was a good piece of advice, as the Knight of the Long Knives would see a huge purge of the SA, with leaders such as de Luga, targeted for execution. But de Luga would be involved in hostilities between the SA and the SS, and he was seen as a reliable man with inside knowledge, who could help keep them in line. De Luga helped to defend Berlin's party headquarters of the Nazis, and Hitler even celebrated de Luga's efforts. He wrote in an open letter saying, SS man, your honour is loyalty. My honour is loyalty. But he was promoted and Heinrich Himmler was in control of the southern units of the SS, with de Luga in control of the northern units. Himmler would eventually rise to become the Reichsführer SS, and the head of the group, and one of the most powerful men in Germany behind Adolf Hitler, but de Luga is much less known about. He continued to establish his power, and he became a member of the Reichstag, and also oversaw the non-political police. But de Luga during the Night of the Long Knives would also be ruthless against his former friends and allies, and he helped the police to become a Nazi police with their ideology, and political beliefs instilled into the officers. Further power and influence came, and then Himmler appointed de Luga as the chief of the Orpo, or the Order Police, and he was now in control of all of the uniformed police officers under the Nazi-controlled lands. Around 1939, with the outbreak of the Second World War, he had control of around 120,000 police officers, and many of these were virulent and brutal Nazis, intent on keeping people down, and against dissenting against the Nazi regime. But as the Second World War continued, he was involved in some of the horrific war crimes and executions inside of occupied lands. He personally witnessed a number of mass shootings of Jews in Poland and Belarus, and he also helped to organise large-scale deportations. De Luga's signature was also present on a number of orders for people to be sent to concentration camps, and also to be moved into ghettos, and he also witnessed much of the senior Nazi meetings in which they discussed the expansion of the Holocaust. But inside of Czechoslovakia, Daluga became a brutal and barbaric overseer. Following the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich, the Reich Protector of Bohemia and Moravia, Daluga was named Deputy Protector in 1942. A state of emergency occurred following this, and dozens of people were executed in reprisal. 
it was decided that the revenge attacks would be centred on a number of villages, and those who it was believed had helped to hide the assassins of Heydrich. The Nazis would execute all adult men, deport the women to the concentration camps, and send those children who they believed were suitable to SS families, and they would then burn down the villages to the ground. De Luga was a man who ordered the SS officers to assault the villages of Lidis and Azaki. The chaos in the villages occurred, and it was horrific, and all of the men of Lidis were rounded up and taken to a farm. Mattresses were taken from the homes, and were put up against the wall of the barn to stop bullets ricocheting. Then the shooting occurred at 7am on the 10th of June 1942, and groups of five men were brought in at a time for their execution. This was then said to have been too slow, so groups of ten were then executed together. Only three male villagers survived, and 203 women and 105 children were moved to a nearby school. The children were ripped away from their mothers, who were then placed on vehicles and taken to concentration camps. But a lot of the children who were not said to have been suitable to be Germanized were then sent to the Kelmno extermination camp, where over 80 were slaughtered in gas vans. The villagers were burned to the ground and destroyed with explosives, and all animals were also slaughtered. Gold teeth were even ripped from the deceased victims, and Lazaki experienced the same treatment as the deceased weeks later, after a radio transmitter was found nearby, and this had allegedly been used by Heydrich's assassins. De Luga, though, terrorised the Czech people, and he was a man who could carry out the brutal will of Adolf Hitler. He continued in these roles he had until May 1943, and then he suffered a huge heart attack and almost died. He spent a long time recovering, and Hitler relieved him of his jobs and offices, and he was even given a large property to recover at by Hitler. But at the end of the Second World War, Kurt de Luga was arrested by British forces in Lübeck. He was transported first to Luxembourg and was then moved again to Czechoslovakia to face up to his crimes that he had inflicted upon the Czech people when he served as a protector of Bohemia and Moravia. He was brought to the trial for his crimes against humanity and at trial he was ignorant and it was claimed that three million police officers were loyal to him and saw him as a powerful figure like Heinrich Himmler. But de Luga, when accused of the charges, said he was just following the orders given to him from Hitler and he was ignorant, saying he committed no crime. But then he was sentenced to death, and he was convicted of all of the charges. The day after he was found guilty, Kurt de Luga was executed. He was taken and held inside of Pankrat Prison briefly in Prague, and during the war this had been a Gestapo interrogation centre. He was taken out of his prison cell and into the courtyard, and there were hundreds of people who had gathered in the prison courtyard to witness the death and execution of de Luga. The crowd was made up of many other guards too, and de Luga was led out by some to the execution post or pole, and he was then to be executed using the pole hanging method. He did not die on the gallows of a trap door, and the method would see de Luga secured to a post using ropes, which were passed through a pulley at the bottom of the pole. De Luga was then hoisted up to the top of the pole by a sling across his chest, and a noose was placed around his neck. Then the chest sling was released from around de Luga's body, and he then plunged and jerked downwards and his head was guided down by the executioner's hands and he dislocated de Luga's neck. There was a huge crowd that witnessed de Luga's execution and his death was performed very efficiently. Within minutes of being handed over to the executioner, he was pronounced dead. Kurt de Luga was one of the most brutal and ruthless Nazis of the Second World War and he was a man who was well thought of by Adolf Hitler. He had a huge amount of power as he presided over more the 100,000 police officers as the head of the order police. But inside of Czechoslovakia, he reigned over the lands with brutality and terror and was responsible for a number of horrific war crimes. And for these actions, he would be executed inside the courtyard of Pankrak Prison. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.